Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Donaldson and I'm a customer success specialist in CX here at Cisco. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to create and manage templates in Cisco Catalyst Center. So what are templates? Well, templates are just reusable configuration snippets that can be deployed to manage devices in Catalyst Center. They allow you to use variables in place of device-specific details like the IP address or host name or other details like that. They establish a configuration standard which Catalyst Center can periodically check on to ensure that your network devices are in compliance. They're written in plain text, but they can incorporate language from either the Jinja or Velocity templating syntax. And they can limit to specific device types and they're associated to device locations via network profiles in Catalyst Center. Now there are two types of templates in Catalyst Center and we refer to them as Day Zero and Day N. So what are the differences and the similarities between the two? Well first, their purpose is for Day Zero templates, initial onboarding configuration for what we would consider a greenfield device, meaning factory default. For a day end template, we're talking about day one and beyond configuration while you're moving your device into production or making configuration changes while it's in production. In terms of their usage, day zero templates are only available for use during the plug and play onboarding process when you claim a device. However, day end templates are available at any time after the device has been onboarded into the inventory. For location, Day Zero templates can only be placed in the special template project called Onboarding Configuration. However, Day N templates can belong to any template project, including the Onboarding Configuration project. And finally, some differences. Day Zero templates do not allow you to use system bind variables, and there's a very good reason for this. Primarily, it's because system bind variables are tied to information that Catalyst Center learns about a device once it's been onboarded. So if the device hasn't been onboarded, then it doesn't know anything about it and Catalyst Center can't provide you values for system bind variables. Also, the way in which they're deployed is different. Day Zero templates are deployed to devices through the plug and play agent that exists in the iOS XE software, and they're sent as a text file. However, with day end templates, we can use system bind variables because we've already onboarded the device and learned about it. But when they're deployed to the device, they are sent as CLI commands over an SSH session rather than simply compiling them into a text file and uploading them to the device. So I mentioned that there are two different template uh, syntax languages that we can use. So the two languages we have are Jinja and Velocity. In terms of development, Jinja was created in Python, and so it has a very Pythonic syntax. However, the syntax can be slightly wordy. There's a lot of opening and closing characters that need to be used. Velocity, on the other hand, was developed in Java, and the syntax is a little bit more simple. There are some benefits to using Jinja, where it's more widely used in other platforms, such as Ansible or Python. It's also easier to understand if you're already familiar with the Python programming language. Velocity, on the other hand, has less syntax to write. It looks a bit simpler than Jinja, and it was carried over from Cisco Prime infrastructure, so it's a bit easier to understand if you know Java, and if you're coming from Cisco Prime, it's probably a little more familiar. There are some limitations as well. The Jinja templating language implementation in Catalyst Center is not a full and complete implementation. It's uh, slightly basic, so there are certain advanced Jinja features which simply will not work in Catalyst Center templating. For Velocity, that is an older templating language, and it's not quite as common as Jinja these days. And Jinja has a few advanced capabilities that Velocity doesn't. So finally, how do you choose between which templating language to use? Well, I would recommend that you use Jinja if you are already using Ansible or Python or are familiar with either of those two solutions. And I would recommend that you use Velocity if you're migrating from Cisco Prime infrastructure or if you're brand new to coding and just need something a little simpler to work with. So let's talk about some prerequisites for this demonstration. What will you need in order to accomplish this? 
Well, we'll be needing a Catalyst Center appliance, whether it's uh, physical or virtual, that has at least version 2.3.7.7 or higher installed on it. You will also need a network hierarchy built out, meaning that you'll have to create sites within the global network hierarchy in Catalyst Center. You'll need to create one or more network profiles, and preferably we'll use switching for very simple demos because the switching network profile is the most simple. And then finally, you'll have to choose a templating language that you'd like to use. Okay, so let's move on to our demo. If we switch over to Catalyst Center on the main page when we log into the web user interface, we'll have to go to the menu in the upper left hand corner and then go down to design and click on CLI templates. This is the interface where we create and manage all of our day zero and day end templates. So let's start by taking a look at day zero templates. If we go over to the left hand side and expand project name, we'll see that at least one project is available and it's named onboarding configuration. This project is here by default and it can't be deleted because it's special in that only day zero templates uh, can be assigned to it, or rather all day zero templates must be assigned to that project. So the onboarding configuration project name will always be here and there may be a few others that you see as just examples that come out of the box. To create a day zero template or a day end template, the process is identical. We'll start by going to the add button in the upper right corner and we'll click on new template. From here, we have a pop out with a few form fields that we have to fill out. The first is the template name. So we'll call this demo day zero. The next is a drop down where we have to select the project that we want to associate it to. And since this is a day zero template, it has to be part of the onboarding configuration project. The next option is the template type, which is either regular template or composite sequence. And although we didn't talk about composite sequence templates, the only difference between those and regular templates are that composite sequence templates are a collection of regular templates that will be executed in a specific order that you choose. The next option is to choose our templating language and we can select from Jinja or Velocity. We'll use Jinja in this example. Our next option is a drop down to choose our software type. In this case, we'll be using iOS XE. And finally, we have to choose a device type to associate this template to. So we'll click the add device details and from there we can choose a device family, one or more, from this drop down menu. Because we're only working with switching templates in this example, we're going to scroll down and choose switches and hubs. If we wanted to get more granular, we could narrow this down to even specific device series, like a Catalyst 2950 or 9300, or we could even get as specific as a device model. However, for this example, we'll just leave it wide open to all switches and hubs. When we're done here, we can click Add, and then click Continue to create our template. Once we've done that, we'll be taken to the Template Editor window, and it gives us a large black text box from where we can begin typing our commands. Now, a template can be as simple as a single CLI command with no syntax in it at all. For instance, hostname demo switch. But we could also use a little bit of our uh, templating language syntax to create a more flexible template. Let's say we wanted to create a specific VLAN, so we'd use the VLAN command, but the VLAN number we want the user to choose whenever they deploy this template. That means that we need to put a variable in place of that number. In the Jinja templating language, to create a variable, we start with two open curly braces, and then a space, and we put in the variable name. So we'll call this variable VLAN number. We'll follow that by another space and two closing curly brackets. So this is creating a new variable called VLAN number, and it's assigning it uh, the name VLAN number, and then we can provide a value for it. If we were using the velocity templating language, the syntax would be simply a dollar sign followed by the variable name that we want to create. Oops, VLAN number. 
So it's a little bit simpler, a less wordy syntax in Velocity. All right, so this could be the extent of our template. It doesn't have to be anything special at all. It's just CLI commands that will be run on the device that we deploy this to. If we're all done, we can go down and click Save in the lower right corner. And then we can check out some of the other tabs. There is a Variables tab where all of the variables we've created in our template are listed, and we can change specific settings about them. For instance, we could give it a friendly name that's displayed in the web user interface that maybe makes a little more sense than the actual variable name. We can uncheck or check the required variable checkbox, and having it checked means that you must provide a value for it. We can also configure the type of data to be stored in this variable. Right now, it is set to be a string, and it's an open text field that we would enter it into. But we can choose instead an integer type or an IP address or MAC address. And our entry type could be an open text field or a single select drop down box or a multi select drop down box. If we're OK here, there's one other tab that we can take a look at, which is the simulation tab. So here we can click Create Simulation, and in this pop-out, we have to give it a name. And then we choose a target device, which is really only relevant if we're using system bind variables. And then finally, we'll provide a value for the one variable that we have in our template, so VLAN number 10. What's going to happen when we click Run is that Catalyst Center will combine our variable values along with any device-specific details that we might be referencing based on what device we choose. And it's going to display to us the text output of the template. So this is simply showing us what the outcome would be with those specific variable values. And it's safe to do this because it's not deploying this configuration to any device. All right, so if we're happy with our template, we can then go back to the Templates tab and we click the Commit button. And this is exactly like what you would see if you're using Git or GitHub, where we're committing our changes to this repository of templates. We can add a note about what we're changing, or we can leave it blank and simply click Commit. Now that we've committed that template, we can go back to our view of templates, and we can actually attach that template to a network profile. Network profiles are simply the connection point between templates and the location hierarchy in Catalyst Center. So they allow us to create templates and associate them with one or more sites where devices are uh, configured. So in this case, we'll click Attach, and we'll choose Demo Switching, which is a simple switching network profile that I created uh, for this demonstration. And we'll attach it as a Day Zero template. Then we'll click Save. If we hit the Refresh button, we'll now see that this changes to a 1, and we'll be able to see, again, what network profile it's attached to. We could also see which sites this uh, network profile is associated with. And then we're back at our CLI templates. So that concludes how to create and manage CLI templates in Catalyst Center, both Day 0 and Day N. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit our YouTube channel. You can also look at the Catalyst Center user guide, which covers this process in great detail. And if you would like to learn more about the two different templating languages, there are links here to the Jinja documentation and the Velocity documentation. Thanks for watching.